you are welcome to a great moment in destiny. God is about to speak directly to you. And the message coming right up is crafted by heaven, not just to challenge you, but to align your destiny. As you embrace divine instruction, expect that God's word is bringing about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation to your entire life. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me and receive God's word through his choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Ekweme. Sin you are receiving into your body. That means a merry heart will do better for you than what Tylenol would do for you in your bones. When you keep your heart merry and ensure that there's no brokenness in your spirit, it will ensure that you are in that place called in health. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 13, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. We forbid any brokenness of heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have to be diligent in guarding our hearts from all sorrow. You know, from the things you know that shift you from joy. Amen. Many things, you know, many of those things, you call them drains. Things that drain your spirit. Have you ever had, you know, at times you just go into some long telephone conversations and by the time you are done, your joy is being depleted, your strength is just going down. You know, or you go into, you get into an argument, you know, or you get into strife. That one is a major joy killer. Amen. If strife doesn't kill your joy, that means you're a carnal person. Because no spirit-filled person that is alive unto God can get into strife and your joy is intact, is a lie. You know some people, you can finish fighting. In fact, the joy is, in fact, their joy is stirred up. Let us fight. Let us beat each other. Then you are happy. That is not a spiritual person. A spiritual person cannot walk in strife and be, and be joyful. It cannot happen. Because the spirit of God in you would have been grieved by that strife. Do you understand what I'm saying? So beware of strife. Beware of, you just sit down, you've watched Telemundo, you've watched Z World, you've watched all of them, like six series. Meanwhile, you have not done 20 minutes of word study. That will kill the joy of God in your heart. Because your spirit man is just very unhappy. That why stab me, O oh thou brethren? So we've got to guard our hearts against joy killers. Things that you know will just move you. At times you have some people around you that the enemy allows them to... Try your joy. Wisdom demands that we also learn how to defend ourselves against those things. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Amen. Proverbs 18, 14 says, the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain. This is Amplified Classic. Sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and broken spirit who can raise or bear up. So we have to get to a place and tell ourselves, you know what, well, nothing is going to move my spirit. Your spirit is strong as you feed on the word, like we're saying, so prosperity. Your spirit is strong when you maintain your joy level because the joy of the Lord is what? Is, what? is your strength. So when your spirit man is strong, no matter what comes against your body, guess what? Your spirit man that is strengthened, working with the anointing of God in you, is able to lift a standard against the adversary. Most of the time when people are dealing with illnesses and they pass on to glory, most of the time it's because the spirit has become weary and is in a weak and broken state and they're just like, um, what's that apostle? Was it Philip that said, Lord, unto you I commit my spirit. You know, just let me be going. It's better than this dying and wicked world. You know, but a strong spirit like... Um, Paul's case, when he was stoned, that says, I refuse to die. You know, when your spirit man is in that position, that no matter how terminal or devastating the situation is, a spirit man that has been strengthened by the word of God and by all the other factors, you know, will give you victory. We hope will sustain you and help you to overcome in every um, situation. The Bible says in Psalms 19.8 that the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. You see here that when you begin to feed your heart with the word of God, 
It causes what? The rejoicing of the heart. And the rejoicing of the heart causes the enlightening of the eyes. The more you study the word, it brings joy to you. And the more that joy wells up, the more you're able to see the things that you could not see before, that you were wondering why there was always that recurring illness in and out of season. And the Bible says when the light of God shines, darkness cannot comprehend it. When that light illuminates and floods your whole being, it will cause that disease and that recurring pattern of illness to disappear from you. For God and you, you dwell in that light that darkness cannot approach. That similar scripture in Jeremiah 15 verse 16 says, Their words were found. Amen. Which is what we've been doing even this morning. According to Proverbs 4.20, it says, The words were found and I did what? Eat them. So we are moving from the finding of the word to what now? Eating of the word. Where you begin to delight in it more than your necessary meal, you're meditating on what the scriptures have said. You know, God is saying, I've restored health to you and healed your wounds. And you're eating that. The restoration of my health means that no more weekdays. That means that every symptom, germ, virus that touches my body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. And that word you're eating, the Bible says, becomes the joy and the rejoicing of your heart. This is how it works. When you find and eat the word of God, it causes what? The rejoicing of your heart. The more your heart rejoices, the more your eyes are enlightened. When your eyes are enlightened, uh, all the land that you see, God says he will give to you. If what you see is 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, 120 with you and your great-grandchildren in health, in strength, that there's no feeble person amongst your tribe. Uh, according to that which you see, may the Lord deliver into your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, because once your eyes see it, your hands will be able to lay hold of it. But you see, so it's a whole circle. The more you see it, the more you begin to find and eat again. And then it causes rejoicing of your heart and the enlightening of your eyes. And that circle comes, continues that way. The Bible says in Isaiah 12, 3, it says, Therefore, with joy, you will draw waters out of the wells of salvation. There is a healing fountain that is within you. There's the person of the Holy Ghost who is the one that sustains your health. But guess what? The more you keep your joy level up, the more you're able to draw water, you draw strength, you draw the healing anointing out of the wells of salvation. Number three, how do I stay in health? A consciousness of God's indwelling presence. The Bible says in 1 John 4.4, 4, it says you are of God little children and have overcome them because what? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So a consciousness that there's someone that is on your inside and this person on your inside is greater than the spirit of malaria, is greater than the spirit of flu, is greater than the spirit of high blood pressure. There is one that is on your inside whose power destroys yokes and removes any burden that comes your way. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is where? In you. So the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you. He's in you. And you are not your own. The one who owns you, who indwells you, is responsible for keeping your body strong. He now says, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. How do you glorify God? The more you meditate on the, on the fact that this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is glad. God is being glorified. The more you think, surely he has borne my sickness, which means I cannot bear it again. God is glorified and is like, wow, this is good. My finished work was not done in vain. The more you are resisting the devil and whom resists his steadfast in faith and everything that comes against you, you are standing your ground and saying, no, I'm not going to shift from my location in health. Guess what? God is glorified by that. The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians 6.16, that what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said what? I will do what? Dwell in them. And I will do what? Walk in them. I will be their God and they will be my people. God is saying he, Jehovah Elion, the most high God. 
Your great physician, he dwells in you. And he is walking. Can you imagine his majestic steps? Walking in your lungs, your kidneys, your cells, your bones, your marrow. So how can cancer thrive in a body that Jehovah is saying, I, I am dwelling in, I am walking in. And you know, he, when he comes, he feels everywhere with his glory, with his majestic presence. Is somebody seeing this picture? A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. It is often asked, where is the God of Elijah? Well, the time has come to seek the Elijahs of God. Revival House of Glory International Church, carrying the torch of revival across the nations. People often ask, where is the God of Elijah? Well, God is asking, where are the Elijahs of God? At Rogic, we are grooming men and women with the tools to make the difference in everyday life. Join us every Sunday at 8 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 5.45 p.m. for fresh insights to translate your life from the mundane to the glorious. Venue is Golden Bird Event Center, plot 859A Ame Ebute Street, Wuye District, Abuja. On Olushagun Obasanjo Way, make the turn into Anyim Pios Anyim Street, then take the right turn onto Ame Ebute Street. Your host is Goodhart Obi Ekweme. Revival is here again. Revival House of Glory International Church is an expression of the Horn of Revival Ministry. doesn't share his vessel, his temple with any spirit of infirmity. God has come. He said, I will arise upon you with healing in my wings. He just comes and he takes over your whole being as his sanctuary. In 1 Corinthians 3, 16, he says again, know you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. If any man defiles the temple of God, him will God destroy. You know, this does not just talk about purity, but it also refers to your wholeness. That means God is angry with any disease that tries to come to defile his own temple, his own habitation. So because God is angry with it, you must be angry with it too. As God is saying no to that disease and God is sending his indignation and lifting the standard against the spirit of infirmity, in the same way you must also stand on God and say no, 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 no. No room for infirmity in this body. For this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, since that same spirit who raised Christ from the dead does not visit you, huh, but makes his permanent abode uh, in your physical body. It says this same spirit, uh, this same operation that raised Christ from the dead, that no opinion of hell and death was taken, uh, whether Jesus could rise or not. Uh, this same operation, the same mighty working of the power of God uh, is at work in you right now. Uh quickening, uh, making alive uh, every organ, every system, uh, every part of 
Jacking it up uh, with the force of life uh, and the force of divine nature, making it impossible for any form of disease to share with God the temple that he has purchased uh, with the precious price uh, of the blood of his son. Uh, somebody that believes it, shout a big amen. There is a quickening taking place in your body right now. For he sent his word uh, and healed them uh, and delivered them from destruction. The Bible says while well, Peter was yet speaking, uh, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard uh, and received the word. The Bible says uh, I and the spirit of the word, the healing spirit uh, entered into me when he spake unto me, not to make me happy. No, 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 but to destroy my yokes, uh, to remove my burdens, to turn around, to cause a shift uh, in the whole of my body system. And guess what? Set me up uh, upon my feet. <laughs> Give me movement. Uh, make me advance. Uh, give me speed. Uh, where you used to be slow before because of weariness uh, of your body and of your mind. Uh, I decree in the name of Jesus that by the power of the Holy Ghost uh, that has come upon you now uh, that yoke is destroyed. Uh, that burden is lifted off you. There is a shift in your body makeup right now. In the name of Jesus, you are set upon your feet. Uh, I decree gain speed right now. Move forward in the name of Jesus. Advance by the workings of the Holy Ghost uh, and fulfill divine purpose. Uh, may your troublers be troubled. Uh, may every disease that has been arranged from hell to trouble you. Ah, uh, is it not written uh, by the blood of Jesus? Uh, he has blotted out uh, every handwriting of wickedness uh, written against your health. Uh, it is taken out of your way, out of your blood system, out of your immune system out of your bones and marrow and nailed to the cross of Jesus. He said have a spot. Guess what? These things that come to fight with you are not things that are still real. The Bible says they are spot. They are already ruined they are already demolished. Uh, having spoiled principalities and powers, uh, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And I decree to you by the blood of Jesus, you have overcome. The last disease you experienced uh, is the last you will ever see. The last ailment that child suffered uh, is the last you will ever see. I decree a change of season for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, you need to open your mouth wider uh, like we've heard on Sunday. You need to begin to declare your victory that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Sickness shall not locate my dwelling place. Uh, you will decree it. You will walk in it. What you will not work with the enemy. The Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. The weak will not say, oh, it looks like I have malaria. He didn't say, let the weak say, I don't have malaria. He said, let the weak say what? I am strong and I am healed. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3.10, He that loves life and will see good days, let him restrain his tongue from evil. Don't partner with the enemy to enforce him to put in you a disease that the Lord Jesus Christ did not put in you on you. In the name of Jesus, he said, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking God. If you want long life, if you want to see good days, uh, if you want to live to a ripe, full old age, blessed in everything. Like Abraham, the Bible says Abraham was old and full of age and the Lord had blessed him in everything. Somebody say in everything. Is somebody seeing that picture this morning? In every single thing. That means that nobody was carrying him around. That means that his muscles were working. His bones were working. Reckon. His heart is beating right. The Bible says, engage your tongue to speak that which will favor you. Finally, the Bible says your trust and your faith is important. It says in Ephesians 6, 16, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you are able to quench or crush every fiery dart the enemy brings against you. That means it doesn't matter what the enemy brings against you. It is quenchable. And with faith actively working in your heart, you can quench it. 
You can quench it. You can quench it. But the power and the stronghold of the blood of the Lamb will shut the mouth of lions uh, arranged against your health. Uh, and we extinguish every raging fire against your health. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, we decree an end, uh, an utter end to that circle of affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. There was a word that came to us on the 1st of October. If we're on the 5 a.m., prayer, um, GPPA prayer call, and I want to read it to us before we go. Genesis 8, 5, that the waters decreased continually until when? The 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, where the tops of the mountains were seen. This scripture is for somebody. From January, the symptoms, you know, like that man, the Bible says that the son of that man began to amend. You didn't see full recovery, but you notice that the symptoms are reducing. Weakness is reducing. Pain is reducing. You are not yet where you ought to be, but you saw that there was a decline of that symptom. God is saying that the tops of the mountains are being seen. That means your health is emerging. The fullness of your strength is breaking forth. The Bible says when we wait upon the Lord like we did on Friday, that our light will break forth as the morning and our health will spring forth. How? Speedily. So I decree to you right now, according to this word, that there's a speedy fulfillment of the emergence of your total health, of your total strength, of your total well-being. In the mighty name of Jesus, the top of your mountain is being seen now all of a sudden your mates will say wow this is now the eight month with her that used to be sick your doctors will say wow this is the sixth month the second year that you have not visited the hospital i decree the top of this mountain of total health and total strength will be seen in the name of jesus christ the bible says in jeremiah 30 17 it says for i will restore health unto you and i will heal thee of your wounds. There were three words that came to us again. God said that the three um, that God would do what? He will revive us. He will do what? He will restore us. And then what will he do? He will compensate us. God is saying to you all those years of suffering, all those years of being in the dark that the enemy has just been doing you anyhow. He said in the verse before that in Jeremiah 30, 16, he says, all they that devoured thee, Jeremiah 30, 16, he said, all they that devoured thee shall be devoured. And all your adversaries, he says, every one of them, the pain in your toe, the pain on your neck, the one on your leg, shall go into captivity. They that spoil thee shall be what? A spoil. And they that pray upon thee, God will give them for what? A prayer. And then in the next verse he said, I will restore health unto thee. I want you to just lift up your hands and say, Father, thank you for the fulfillment of this word over my life. Thank you for restoring health to my eyes, to my liver, to my kidney, to my kidneys, to my pancreas, to my immune system. Lord, I want to say thank you. Our great physician, thank you. Is there no balm in Gilead? Indeed, there is a balm in Rajak. Our great physician, the one that heals our bodies. Thank you for releasing your healing power this morning. Thank you for causing that disease to depart. Thank you for causing unclean spirits to leave your children. Thank you for causing your healing power to work a healing and a cure. Thank you for perfectness, perfection in that body this morning. We give you praise, we give you glory. As we thank you for the next level in the service. For that which your heart is set to do, your hand is performing. And we give you all the praise for it. We give you all the glory for it. With a clap and with a shout. We exalt your majesty. And we welcome the ministry of House of Judah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can somebody put their hands together for Jesus? have just experienced the preaching and teaching ministry of Goodheart Obi Ekweme, lead pastor of Revival House of Glory International Church, Rajik, and the apostolic leader of the Horn of Revival Ministry, HORM, a global outreach ministry mandated to carry the torch of revival across cities and nations. 
If you would like to ask a question, share your prayer request or testimony, or get more messages or books from Goodheart, please call or text 0805-223-4444 or email info at rogic.org. Also, download the Horn of Revival Ministry app on Google Play or Apple Store to connect with a variety of free quality resources including Rogic Radio and our refreshing daily devotions to take you higher in life. Keep hearing the Word of God. It will produce intimacy with His Spirit for uncommon encounters on the earth.